Hello and happy Monday from Radically Rational and RadicallyRational.com. I think one of the things about trying to be rational is not being afraid to say, I don't know, when I don't know. All right, so the president has got some big decisions to make in the next week or 10 days regarding what we're going to do about student loan debt, if anything. I don't know. I do know that as Americans, we're not very good at nuanced thinking at all. It's always either or, or all or nothing. There are a lot of components to this, and you're not wrong if you're saying that if somebody has taken out that debt and taken on that debt, that they are responsible for it and should not have their hands wiped completely clean. Look, I get that, that's a cardinal principle. But I also know that the system is broken and that our educated young people should not start out their productive working lives under an anvil that they'll never get over, okay? And that's not just a humanitarian approach, that's a smart economic approach. You talk about the damage it might do to the American economy if we forgive all the debt, you're right. But think about the damage we are doing right now under the current system. So some kind of middle step here that's fair to everybody and gets rid of the flaws in the system because that's the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is the entire system is jacked up in the first place. But as to the ultimate decision right now, hmm, I don't know. Now, I do know this. When you have books being banned and books being taken out of libraries, that is the death knell. That is the death rattle of culture and society. That's not the path we want to go down at all. Um, been working in media a long time. Not only do I know not know what CNN is doing, I don't even know what they're trying to do. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. All right, so sports, what do you think? Brady coming in today or not? Yeah, I'm curious. All right. Understand this, on a pro football team, the most important player is the starting quarterback. Second most important player is the blindside offensive tackle, followed by maybe your best cover corner, etc. But after that, it's your backup quarterback. Because the injury rate in the NFL is 100%. So there are some teams that I thought found out some good things about their backup quarterback situation yesterday. Did you see Cleveland's Joshua Dobbs? He was absolutely wonderful. Now, look at the situation in Cleveland. Watson's out for 11 games, okay? And with respect to Jacoby Brissett, they don't even want to get him dirty right now. All right, so Dobbs has been competing with Josh Rosen for the backup job and the last spot on that roster, and Dobbs won it yesterday. Now, think about what this may mean for Rosen. A former first-round draft choice out of UCLA, and his NFL career may be over. Gardner Minshew, let me get my mustache out. He looked great in leading the Eagles to two long early touchdown drives, but the most valuable backup quarterback in the NFL is Baltimore's Tyler Huntley. Now, let me explain why. Nobody can duplicate exactly what Lamar Jackson does, but it's really important on any football team that your backup quarterback be able to run the same stuff as your starting quarterback, because that's how you get ready to play. Here's the thing about Huntley. He's almost as dynamic a runner as Jackson, and he is three times the passer. So if the Ravens have something to feel good about, and actually they got a lot to feel good about, it's their backup quarterback situation. They were decimated by injuries a year ago, but if they stay even reasonably healthy, they are a handful. Let's hope that Kayvon Thibodeau, the rookie pass rusher, the Giants out of Oregon is okay, went down with a nasty looking knee injury yesterday. He says he's okay. Well, the MRI today will tell the tale. Glad the Astros avoided that three game sweep in Atlanta, but they finished the road trip with a losing record and that's the first time that's happened this year. Boy, Patrick Cantlay on the links yesterday, he was great under a lot of pressure but pulls off a back-to-back -back championship in the BMW tournament, so he's the number two seed now in the overall FedEx Cup thing behind Scotty Scheffler. Um, a fond farewell and a tip of the cap to Tom Weisskopf. Okay, look, I don't have a lot of things figured out, but I have decided this for all of us, 
The key to having a good day is often just deciding at the outset that it's going to be a good day. Okay, that's easier said than done. A lot of things happen to us over the course of the day that we can't anticipate, but we can, we can plan how we're going to handle it. So I've decided I'm going to have a good day today, and I'm wishing the very same and the very best for all of you. One more thing. Ask me this question. Am I offended by Finland's prime minister? Oh, just hell no. That's part of being radically rational.